Hello, Mahanasen. Mr. O'Connor here. I have a short story to read for you today. It is from a very famous author named Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote in the 1800s, and it is a short story titled The Cask of Amontillado. I'm going to read it in two parts. It should take about 20 minutes, but if you're looking for something to do, maybe on a rainy day, it's a good story. It's, uh, it's creepy, but that's what people like about Edgar Allan Poe. Here it is, the cask of Amontillado. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled. But the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the, air, the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed I had given Fortunato cause to doubt my good will. I continued, as was my wont, to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that my smile now was at the thought of his immolation. He had a weak point, this Fortunato, although in other regards he was a man to be respected and even feared. He prided himself upon his connoisseurship in wine. Few Italians have the true virtuoso spirit. For the most part, their enthusiasm is adopted to suit the time and opportunity to practice imposture upon the British and Australian millionaires. In painting and gemmary, Fortunato, like his countrymen, was a quack. But in the matter of old wines, he was sincere. In this respect, I did not differ from him materially. I was skillful in the Italian vintages myself and bought largely whenever I could. It was about dusk one evening during the supreme madness of the carnival season that I encountered my friend. He accosted me with excessive warmth, for he had been drinking much. The, wan the man wore motley. He had on a tight-fitting party-striped dress and his head was surmounted by the conical cap and bells. I was so pleased to see him that I thought I should never have done wringing his hand. I said to him, my dear Fortunato, you are luckily met. How remarkably well you are looking today. But I have received a pipe of what passes for Amontillado. And I have my doubts. How, said he, Amontillado, a pipe? Impossible. And in the middle of the carnival? I have my doubts, I replied. And I was silly enough to pay the full Amontillado price without consulting you in the matter. You were not to be found, and I was fearful of losing a bargain. Amontillado. Mm, I have my doubts. Amontillado? And I must satisfy them. Amontillado! As you are engaged, I am on my way to Lucchesi. If anyone has a critical turn, it is he. He will tell me. Lucchesi cannot tell Amontillado from Sherry. And yet some fools will have it that his taste is a match for your own. Come. Let us go. Whither? To your vaults. My friend, no. I will not impose upon your good nature. I perceive you have an engagement. Lucchesi, I have no engagement. Come. 
my friend, no. It is not the engagement, but the severe cold with which I perceive you are afflicted. The vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted with nitre. Let us go, nevertheless. The cold is merely nothing, Amontillado. You have been imposed upon, and as for Lucchesi, he cannot distinguish Sherry from Amontillado. Thus speaking, Fortunato possessed himself of my arm, and putting on a mask of black silk and drawing a cloak closely around my person, I suffered him to hurry me to my palazzo. There were no attendants at home. They had absconded to make merry in honor of the time. I had told them I should not return until the morning and had given them explicit orders not to stir from the house. These orders were sufficient, I well knew, to ensure their immediate disappearance. One and all, as soon as my back was turned. I took from their sconces two flambeaux, and giving one to Fortunato, bowed him through several suites of rooms to the archway that led into the vaults. I passed down a long and winding staircase, requesting him to be cautious as he followed. We came at length to the foot of the descent and stood together upon the damp ground of the catacombs of the Montressors. The gait of my friend was unsteady, and the bells upon his cap jingled as he strode. The pipe, said he. It is farther on, said I, but observe the white webwork which gleams on these cavern walls. He turned towards me and looked into my eyes with two filmy orbs that distilled the room of intoxication. Niter, he asked at length. Niter, I replied, how long have you had that cough? <coughs> my poor friend found it impossible to reply for many minutes. It is nothing, he said at last. Come, I said with decision, we will go back. Your health is precious. You are rich respected, admired, beloved. You are happy as once I was. You are a man to be missed. For me, it is no matter. We will go back. You will be ill and I cannot be responsible. Besides, there's Lucchesi. Enough, he said. The cough is a mere nothing. It will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. True, true, I replied, and indeed I had no intention of alarming you unnecessarily, but you should use all proper caution. A draft of this medoc will defend us from the damp. Here I knocked off the neck of a bottle, which I drew from a long row of its fellows that lay upon the mold. Drink, I said, presenting him the wine. He raised it to his lips with a leer. He paused and nodded to me familiarly while his bells jingled. I drink, he said, to the buried that repose around us. And I to your long life. He again took my arm and we proceeded. These vaults, he said, are extensive. The Montressors, I replied, were a great and numerous family. I forget your arms. A huge human foot in a field azure. The foot crushes a serpent whose fangs are embedded in the heel. And the motto? No one insults me with impunity. Good. He said, that's the end of part one for Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Cask of Amontillado. And I hope you tune into part two. It'll be another 10 minutes and you'll get the awesome ending to the short story. Have a good day and I hope to see everybody soon.
Bye-bye.